this is Hurricane Florence, which is bearing down on the Carolina coast. A confirmed landfall for this hurricane at 7.15 a.m., 45 minutes ago in Wrightsville Beach, about six miles where I am from where I am right now. We are still very much in the thick of it here in Wilmington, North Carolina. A confirmed wind gust of 92 miles an hour, which is the strongest wind gust recorded here, apparently, since 1960. And as bad as that is, and as bad as this looks right now where I'm standing in Wilmington, the real danger of this storm isn't the wind, it's the duration. This will be going on for some time, hours and hours, if not days. It's the rain falling at three inches per hour, which will fall like this again for days. 22 inches of rain already recorded in Atlantic Beach, about 70 miles from where I am. Another 20 could fall. And then the storm surge. The storm surge because this storm is so immense, its breath is pushing the water up into the rivers. The city of New Bern, again, about 80 miles from where I am, a crisis situation overnight, more than 100 rescues. We understand there are many more people still in need of rescue, and even though it's so Here's the latest from the National Hurricane Center. We've got a Category 1 storm, 35 miles west-southwest of Wilmington, 75-mile-per-hour winds, still moving slowly west at 6 miles per hour. We have tornado watches up uh, to the north and to the west as well. Here's the track. It's still a, a tropical, I should say, a Category 1 storm in Myrtle Beach. Then Saturday, it makes its way. It becomes a tropical storm on top of Columbia by Saturday night at 8 p.m., and then will continue moving to the west and then to the north. The storm surge, the big story. 6 to 11 feet, the next high tide from about midnight to 12.35 a.m. this morning. So we'll be watching that. And catastrophic flooding still possible with anywhere from another 10 to 20 inches of rain generally. One area, Orient, North Carolina, got 20 inches of rain. And Lester, you, where you are in Wilmington, they saw 105 mile per hour wind gust. That's the highest wind gust since Hurricane Helene back in 1958. The center of the storm is about 35 miles southwest of Mexico Beach, Florida. The eye wall coming ashore right now between Panama City and Apalachicola. Extreme wind warnings are in effect for a large swath of the Florida Gulf Coast. And Florida's Governor Rick Scott says this will be the worst storm to hit the panhandle in more than a century back to the 1860s. The National Guard has been activated. You see the winds whipping up, the rain coming across the screen right there. More than 1,000 search and rescue teams are in standby. President Trump has just been briefed on the storm and tweeting all morning. He says Hurricane Michael started small but grew into a monster. I want to go straight to World News Tonight anchor David Muir on the scene there in Panama City Beach. David. And George, we cannot understate that Hurricane Michael is historic. It is a Category 4 hurricane. They have never seen a Category 4 in this region, this part of the Florida Panhandle. They dealt with Opal and with uh, Dennis back in 95 and 2005. Those are both Cat 3s. This is a Category 5, winds, as you point out, 150 miles per hour. The outer eye wall is just beginning to touch land between where we are in Panama City, Panama City Beach and St. Vincent Island, closer to Mexico Beach, is where that outer eye wall, some of the most damaging winds set to make landfall 
imminently. This hurricane is about to make landfall, again, uh, not far from where we are right now. I want to show you behind me some of the damage it's already done. You can see the trees here. One of them has already come down behind us. Most of them are bending back and forth in dramatic fashion, as you would expect to see with a hurricane uh, bearing down on us. And the, the power lines, as you can see, are already coming down in the streets here behind me. And that is what they're really worried about with this hurricane. Just the, the sheer scope of these winds, 150 miles per hour. It's hard to wrap your, your head around this. They have buoys out in the water, the National Weather Service does, to sort of measure the wave size. At one point, they measured a wave up to 31 feet, and then it stopped delivering data. Sort of ominous message from the National Weather Service when the data went down. We just got an alert from the National Weather Service in Tallahassee, not far from here, an alert that we had never seen before from that particular uh, station. They said the situation is about to get serious in Bay, Gulf, and Franklin counties. We're here in Bay County, and they said this is the first ever extreme wind warning that they've issued. That means wind gusts in excess of 130 miles per hour. Projections are associated with solar flares and this is when material actually escapes the gravitational field of the Sun and is propelled out into interplanetary space and this material which is made up of protons electrons is traveling at very high rates of speed and if that coronal mass ejection is pointed towards the earth we can have aurorae we can have problems with our GPS systems. We can have problems with airplanes needing to reduce the altitude in, in which they fly. Astronauts are asked not to go outside the space station. And sometimes actual satellites can be impacted. 